We've got a very full day today, important sessions here, lots of breakout sessions, and a fabulous gala dinner this evening. So look, our topic, our topic is what's different? Uh, new growth strategies, new business models after the reset. The idea is simply this. We went into a financial crisis and in the developed world a recession of historic proportions just over two years ago. Uh, the recession is arguably over now, although some think that we might go back. But even if the recession is over, the world we are going into now is very different from the world we left when the crisis began a little over two years ago. Economies have been transformed. The Western economies in particular seem weakened and likely to stay that way for a long time. Some of the developing economies look stronger than ever. Industries have been transformed. Financial services, automotive, media, these industries have been turned upside down in the past two years. Companies, great and famous companies, have gone bankrupt. Some of them disappeared entirely. Other companies have risen up and have become newly powerful. It's a completely different world, and so our topic is how do you strategize and operate in that new world? We have a tremendous panel to talk about it. Dominic, I'll start with you because you see all industries, as it were, at McKinsey. What's the most important difference now from the business environment we had two years ago? Uh, I think I would point out two things. So really, I mean, it's a very powerful point that you can't find a superior business model when you look at what happened over the past two years. Winners and losers in every one. So it was execution, management, and in particular risk management. Do you think what that characterized the winners? Well, I would say it's quality it's in, in general. I mean, uh, management quality. But it's risk management in particular. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm a strong believer that experience played a role in this, in this context. And, and I always say good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from having made mistakes. mistakes right. So why fire everyone who makes a mistake? Give right. him another chance, but right. ask him not to repeat it. <laughs> right. And I think that is a very important message and a lesson I learned, and, and we did so, and, and I think quite successfully. It's a great point. Whenever somebody makes a mistake, you've just invested in their education. Exactly. So uh, you want if, them. If he does it only once. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, so Ellen, your company, DuPont, has gone through a fundamental change over the past decade in the first place, right? I mean, you changed, uh, you and your predecessor, Chad Holliday, changed the uh, conception of the company. But what is the most important difference in your business environment from two years ago? I think it's the acceleration of the emerging markets. I mean, David, in pharmaceuticals, you have seen a Ch huge change in your world also in a different kind of way. Uh, obviously, important new regulation in the United States with the passage of the health care reform. Austerity in Europe, I was told that Greece, just in the past few days, passed a law cutting pharmaceutical prices, 26%. I mean, this is a fundamental difference in how your industry operates. What's the most important difference for you? Well, I think the, uh, this trend of acceleration of consumers, individual consumers, also companies, customers of every kind, are not simply more frugal, which you often hear. It's not that they're more frugal. They are redefining value mm -hmm. in this environment. So th what you've got to think up is the new way to give it to them. I wouldn't say they're frugal. I mean, they are willing to pay a price. Right. They, they are willing to spend, but they want to have value in exchange. And I yeah. think that's the big difference. David, you said R&D declined in 2009 for the first time. And the reason you gave wasn't directly related to a recession. No. It was related to a change in the industry. Is this a bad thing for the world in general? I mean, if the pharmaceutical industry is spending less on R&D? It is if we can't deliver with... It would seem to be a very important point. I mean, one of the most famous case studies in business is how your company, DuPont, in the Great Depression, yeah. kept R&D constant and, as a result, produced some of the all-time great products, nylon and neoprene and yep. so forth, yep. that made billions of dollars later. The question now is, where will you be doing that R&D? More and more I hear companies doing it in China, in India, other places. So we still do basic research. It's an interesting point from both of you, because what you're saying is it's really important to do things that 
at that moment, you may feel least able to do. In other words, focus more on the customer when the customer's spending less. Communicate more when you feel less certain of what you have to say. Yeah. This is a real challenge Absolutely. and doesn't come naturally to people. Yeah. Joe, does this resonate with your experience? I mean, everyone here has spoken about volatility being at a sort of generally higher level uh, for a pro I mean, Maybe it's a permanent change. I mean, the reality is, although no one wants to say it now, the reality is that the financial services business offers plenty of ways to deal with volatility, including through much derided derivatives, which are in fact a terrific way to deal with volatility. Can you eventually make that case in the future? I, I would say volatility we were always managing. Yeah. What we have seen now I want to ask about different business models because I do get the sense that they are changing. Uh, in fact, Dominic, I have to say a number of uh, people in your business, consultants who see a lot of industries, have told me that this is a fundamental change over the last yeah. few years, that a good business model used to last for decades, yeah. right? And now it simply doesn't anymore. It may have to be changed every six or eight years, maybe even more often than that. Is that consistent with your findings? It it is. I mean, I, I think we should also note those areas. Actually, that gets to a point that I want to ask each of you about, a larger point, which is whenever something large happens, like the financial crisis and the recession, I mean, as awful as it was, it was a big phenomenon, and a big phenomenon also always holds opportunities. Yeah. I'll start with you, Ellen, but I want to ask each of you, what was the opportunity that emerged from all of this? I think for us it was um, fundamentally... The Here we've talked about the increases in risk, the accelerations, in, uh, the acceleration of trends, the rise in volatility, which are all extremely important. At the same time, the message that a lot of you are emphasizing is one of constancy and the things that don't change and the things that we'd better not forget as we go through all of this. Uh, we've got to wrap up, I'm afraid, but I want to say... To Joe, Dominic, David, Ellen, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.